Hi, I'm James Cathrall, founder of Cathrall Audio, and Mainstage 3.7 has finally been released after more than a year since the latest major update, which came in November of 2023, and the latest update period coming in December of 2023. It's now been more than a year. I actually had a script that I was working on. I was speculating on whether Apple had abandoned Mainstage or had some sort of major update in the works and now this one released. So super exciting. Let's start digging into what the update has to offer. All right, let's talk about how to update main stage because Apple doesn't really make it easy to revert back to old versions as soon as you've updated. They really want you operating just on the newest, most up-to-date versions of their applications. But this can help give you that little bit of peace of mind so that when you update, you'll still have the ability to go back to the old version just in case this new version breaks any of your third-party applications. That way you can still update, take a look at the newest features, see what it has to offer, but still have the stability of an old version in case you need it. So first thing I'm going to do is go to my finder window and then go to applications. And then I have main stage right here. So I've done this a few times already in the past. If I scroll up to the top, I keep them in folders. So here are some of my old versions of main stage in case I want to use them. And down here is my most up-to-date version. I'm going to right click main stage and I'm going to click duplicate. Now I have a copy of my main stage application. I'm gonna rename this copy to the old version. So this is gonna be 3.6.6 and then hit enter. So now this is gonna be my old version of main stage that I can revert back to. And then this one is what's gonna get updated. Now I go to the app store and then I'll click update on main stage. And now only that original version of the application is gonna update. And that old version that I renamed 3.6.6 is gonna stay on that older version. So let's see how that works. And now it's updated to the newest version. So to double check that I know which version each one is running at, I'm gonna first go up to this view tab in the finder area and make sure that I'm showing the preview section. And that's gonna show me this area on the right side of the finder window every time I highlight an application. So if I have it highlighted right here, 3.6.6, I know that it's running that because down here on the bottom right, it says version 3.6.6. And if I go to my original main stage, now it says version 3.7. So I know if I open up this one, I'm gonna be running main stage 3.7. And if I open up this one, I'm gonna be running version 3.6.6. So this can give you just a little bit more peace of mind when you're updating because it's really important when you update your software that you hold on to older versions. That way, if you open up the newest version and it creates some sort of catastrophic error, which is usually gonna happen with your third-party applications, you can just revert back to the old version and run on that until the newer version is a little bit more stable with your third-party applications. All right, now let's start digging in on the new features. If you're a Logic Pro user, then most of these updates will look pretty familiar. It's finally brought over all of the new plugins that have been released in the last couple of Logic Pro updates. The first one is the new Quantec Room Simulator, which is a brand new Reverb plugin that's an emulation of a hardware device back from the old days of doing studio recordings. They used to have that old studio reverb in there called the Quantec Room Simulator. It was really good, especially for doing things like ADR in movies when they're redubbing dialogue in scenes so that instead of having that super dry studio booth, they can actually put the dialogue in the space that it was recorded in by emulating it with this device. It has a lot of really awesome presets, definitely well worth taking the time to dig through it, seeing what it has to offer and see how much it can help you in your main stage concert. Next up is the new Chroma Glow plugin, which is the harmonic distortion plugin that came in Logic Pro 11. Really awesome. It's been out for a while now in Logic. So if you already use Logic, you'll be really familiar with it, but it's a great distortion plugin that really wasn't being offered already in the audio plugins. So this just gives you something new to play with rather than using typically what had been used in the past, which was like the overdrive plugin or something like that. This plugin just gives you some more control and some more depth to be able to create some really awesome distortion and harmonic distortion on your patches. And then finally, as far as plugins go, I didn't see it in the release notes, but they did officially add the new Studio Piano and Studio Bass plugins. These came along with the session players in Logic Pro 11. And so now you have full access to that inside of your main stage concerts. Now, as far as some of the other quality of life type of features that they've added in, you now have the plugin search feature inside of main stage, just like they added in Logic, which is really helpful, especially if you have a large library of third party plugins. This allows you to 
just to type in your plugins and find them quickly inside of your main stage concert. It doesn't look like it has the quick pop-up window like it does in Logic, where you can push Control Command P and then just have that quick search window pop up, just like the spotlight search on a regular Mac computer but still really helpful when you're going into those drop-down menus for your plugins. You can just start typing in just a broad category of plugins, a specific name of a plugin or a manufacturer of plugins, and then you can quickly get to what you need. They also added the feature to quickly remove plugins on channel strips. If you hold Command and then click on a plugin, it'll quickly erase it from that channel strip. It doesn't have the little eraser logo pop up like it does in Logic Pro. So it's kind of hard to tell if it's actually going to do it. But if you hold command and then click on a plugin, it'll erase it quickly. But for some reason in main stage, it only works on plugins. Whereas in Logic Pro in the newest update, you can use it to quickly remove plugins or to quickly remove aux sends. Not exactly sure why they didn't include that in main stage, but we'll see if it comes in a future update. And then as far as bug fixes go, they've once again said that they fixed the channel strip renaming bug, where a lot of times your channel strip would reset back to the instrument number naming scheme, rather than holding on to whatever custom name you gave that channel strip. So fingers crossed that that bug is officially gone forever. And then as far as renaming channel strips go, if you have multiple channel strips inside of one patch, you can now name one and then hit tab and it'll jump to the one next to it. So you can rename that one and then hit tab again, just to keep going down and renaming your channel strips. So if you have a lot of channel strips and you want to quickly rename them, that can help to make that process a little bit faster. And then the last major things to come in, they have a couple new sound library editions that you can download. There's a new Pom Pom producer pack, and there's a new one called Modular Melodies. That's a bunch of new presets for things like Alchemy and other stuff like that. You can check those out by going up to the main stage tab, going to sound library, open sound library manager, and then under sound packs, you'll see the modular melodies right here. And then if I go to producer packs, I'll see the new Pom Pom one. And then I can click install and I'll have those to be able to use inside of my main stage concerts. So that's it for the newest main stage update. I'm really excited to dig into it. It's great that we now have these new plugins. Definitely happy that they finally came to main stage. Took a while, but it's all good. Just happy to finally have access to those inside of my main stage concerts. Are there any updates that you're still wanting to see in main stage? Let me know in the comments down below. And if this video is helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you left it a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.